Hello, I'm Sarkis, and this is Hookah Unlimited. Today, we're going to be going over the Alpaca Mini Rook. If you've been enjoying my videos, please go ahead and don't forget to uh, subscribe and turn on the bell notification so that you can get updates on my videos as soon as we launch. When the Alpaca Rook was introduced to the market, it was competing with two other brands, honestly. Bowls from Tangiers and Bowls from Hukajan. Truth of the matter was, the Alpaca came out as OG Bowls with uh, three models to start with, if I remember correctly. They had the uh, Rook, the Symphony, and the uh, Predator Bowl. And very soon after that came the Apache uh, Bowls. So what we as enthusiasts saw happening that was very different from other bowl brands and other bowl companies at the time that were at least relevant to the enthusiast market were the fact that each model from Alpaca had a different function and feature. For example, the Symphony had a bridge spire. The Apache had a diffused spire. The Predator was a deeper, narrower bowl for a specific purpose, which we'll get into in a future review. What made the uh, Mini Rook especially special uh, was even though it was about a third of the volume capacity of a regular Rook bowl, for some reason, it performed better than a Rook bowl. So that got a lot of us thinking that, hey, maybe size doesn't really matter, but rather, What's most important is the proportion of the trench, which is the uh, part you fill up the, the tobacco in your funnel bowl, and the spire. So the width of the trench versus the width of the spire, that plays a bigger role in terms of what makes a bowl perform well. If you look at an old video I did on YouTube from back in the hookah and bias days, you could link, see the link right over here. I compared five different bowls actually, using Al-Fakhr in, in al how-to, and I showcased how al performs in five different bowls. Out of the five bowls, two of them were uh, alpaca bowls, or at the time they were OG bowls. And one of them was not the mini rook, but the small rook, which the only difference between that and the modern day current batch uh, mini rook is that it was a little uh, shallower, but it was also a tiny bit wider, kind of like a, in between a, a current gen uh, rook and a mini rook was a little bit wider, it was a little bit shallower, had a slightly different curvature to the, to the internal bowl shape as well. But even still, it was only about half the amount of tobacco as a regular Rook bowl, which is the largest one. And yet we saw in that video that it, Al-Fakhar lasted a clean two hours in a, in a small Rook compared to the large Rook, which basically died out within an hour and a half-ish if I remember correctly. The real question in this mini rook review is how does the mini rook compare to that small rook? And we've tested and retested over the years and it actually performs similarly while still using a little bit less tobacco than the small rook did. Eventually causing alpaca to kind of put aside the concept of a small rook and focus on the mini rook because the performance factor was outrageous. Now, what I mean by performance factor for some of you new viewers is basically the amount of tobacco that a given bowl takes versus the amount of session that you get out of it in return, okay? So the longer the session lasts while preserving flavor and clouds, compared to how much tobacco it actually used. The current gen uh, mini rook is about anywhere between 22 to 25 grams of tobacco. And uh, in most packs, it uses less than that. For example, if you were to fluff pack a tobacco brand in a mini rook, it would be half that amount. So anywhere between 11, 13, maybe 14 grams of tobacco. The uh, a dense pack would be about 90% of that. So anywhere between you know, 22, 23 grams of tobacco maybe a little bit less, 21 grams. But you guys get the, get the drift here. What you get from that is an exceptional ratio and, 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 and return in session with brands like, with performance brands such as like Tangiers, you get up to three hour sessions, two hour 45 clean and consistently, sometimes getting three hours, maybe even three hour 15. With even regular standard brands like al or Starbucks, you know, when you set it up right and you pack it optimally, you're gonna see two hours out of both these brands. So you definitely get an amazing return, which in turn makes it so that the uh, Mini Rook has quite the high performance quotient. Now, let me quantify and qualify this with the fact that 
there are other bowls, even by alpaca, that have a higher performance quotient or performance ratio. Uh, but those bowls are more specialized towards specific brands of tobacco and specific uses. The special thing about the mini roll is that it's the most versatile bowl on the market today. What I mean by versatile, guys, is that basically no matter what type of tobacco you put in there, it's going to give you a consistent return in, re in relation to the type of tobacco that it's capable of. Whereas something like an Apaca Symphony Bowl will get you, you know, three hours consistently with bright flavor and really beautiful clouds, the Mini Rook uh, would get you slightly hindered flavor with slightly less clouds. And, and by slight, I mean slight, I mean the difference is you can't tell. The average person won't be able to tell. You have to really, really pay attention to, to the course of the session and jot down every you know, at 10 minute intervals what you're experiencing side by side to be able to tell the difference, which is why so many people today hail the Mini Rook as one of the best bowls of all time because it works with almost any brand and you get a great return on performance for what you put into it but honestly that's something special now to describe the mini rook and its popularity and even the rook as well some of the the features that set it apart from all the other bowls in the market at the time were two key features in my opinion at least number one it was the fact that it came with wonderful color options. I have three different colors over here. We got the peach on the uh, cappuccino. We have the regular cappuccino and I honestly forget what this one's called, but I like to call it like marshmallow because it's got like some hues of pink and light blues and whatnot. <laughs> but uh, the colors and, and tones and the glaze uh, was very special. The consistency of the product was also excellent as well. Uh, at the time, the most popular bowls on the market were the Tangier's funnels, which came in relatively bland color tones, you know, black on red or orange and this and that, you know, very, very solid, very simple uh, color combinations. Hookah Jumbles had a lot of really good color combinations, but, but uh, Alpaca added a splash to the colors and made them more exciting. And that was one of the reasons why the Mini Rook became so popular to begin with. But the defining feature of the Mini Rook is actually its spire. And what Alpaca decided to do was make sure that it's got the ideal height in comparison to the rim of the bowl. As you guys can see over here, it's about mm, three millimeters, two to three millimeters below the rim. But what they decided to do was add uh, grooves on the spire to increase flow rate. Now, there's a reason for that. Back in the day when the rooks first came out, there was a lot of issues with foil lock. And foil lock happens when your spire is a little bit too high in relation to the rim of the bowl. And as you're pulling on it, the suction created a little bit of you know suction on the foil. And the foil would dip down ever so slightly, even half a millimeter, and it would lock the spire and it wouldn't allow you to get any smoke coming through it because it sealed it off foil lock was a major issue the rook bowl and the mini rook gave a real answer to that problem that solved it completely so even if you're not the most proficient at foiling a bowl you're not going to experience foil lock because not only is the spire the correct height but it's got grooves on it and that's where the name of this bowl actually comes from the spire of the rook simply looks like the rook of a chess piece and uh, for the record guys the rook was the first in the world to put grooves on the spire and now guys it's time to get to the actual rating of the mini rook bowl now you guys know i've always praised it as one of the best bowls in the world and uh, it's actually held that title ever since its inception but we're gonna have to do this anyway and just like the last bowl review we did with the samsaris video which you could check out right over here we're gonna go over four categories uh we're gonna go through flow rate features uh quality and overall performance remember the performance aspect gets two points compared to the rest of them but actually we're gonna go ahead and add a new uh category to the rating as well i mean this is only my second bowl video so i hope you guys can forgive me but we're gonna add the aspect of versatility because it definitely applies to the mini rook and it applies to every bowl it's just so few bowls uh can actually perform at the same level that we don't normally think about it but this should really be a standard so from henceforth we're going to include versatility in the uh, categories of rating bowls 
from now and forever all right guys so first and foremost flow rate the mini rook has done an amazing job with flow rate more so than any other bowl on the market uh, not only as i mentioned before is the spire height the right size so that you get enough flow into the spire but the spire is relatively wide as well not only that but the product is consistent through and through if you guys could tell the spire width is the same bowl to bowl to bowl this is a key important thing because flow rate really matters guys those of us who want those big clouds and easy smoking function you know we want to depend on the bowl we want to be able to be like okay this bowl that i'm gonna buy today is gonna be the same as the one i bought three months ago six months ago a year ago etc you want to be able to have trust like that quality control is a major thing when it comes to bowls uh features the feature of the uh mini rook bowl with the uh, with the rook style you know the chess piece grooves on the top is, the, is its defining feature and it's one of the most impressive ones so much so that they get they keep getting copied over and over and over and over and over by pretty much every brand in fact the only brand that that i can think of that hasn't actually copied the mini rook style uh spire is tangiers you know the guys who invented the funnel balls to begin with because they that's why they don't really need to do anything more than that they already they're the ones who created it to begin with uh <laughs> and, and 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 mini rook was the first to create this kind of spire going to the ratings flow rate i'm going to give it a solid 7.5 out of 10 is what i'm going to give it not because it doesn't hit very well but compared to some other per performance bowls on the market uh even though it's very 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 wide 7.5 is quite the high rating um it's not quite as high of a flow rate as some of the other bowls available for, to us. So I think 7.5 is a nice and solid rating for flow rate. Uh, features, I'm gonna give it a 8.5 out of 10 because they were the first to do this kind of innovation. They were the first to innovate this kind of style of a bowl and made it a legitimate and real thing for us to enjoy. And that gets extra points in my book. And for that, they get 8.5 out of 10 we're gonna go into versatility uh, the mini rook is hailed by not just myself but most of my followers and constituents and everybody that actually matters in the rest of the world that knows hookah and understands hookah will say that the mini rook is the most versatile bowl in the world listen guys and I, don't, I am not joking when I tell you this you want to smoke you know brands you've never heard of the mini rook is the one that you use to test this brand because something else might not be able to you know allow that tobacco to perform at its at its peak not only is the mini rook exceptional with being versatile with tobacco brands it's also exceptional with the two leading types of of hmds on the market the lotus and the provost uh the i introduced the mini rook as the perfect bowl for to pair with provost many many years ago now and i think it was like six years ago is when i first talked about it but even with the lotus it works just fine so i got my blue lotus from the other video we did last time and if you can tell the lotus uh fits not flush on the mini rook but it fits so much so that the uh, grooves on the on the inner lining are matching the outermost rim of the bowl itself which means that it'll lock in the flavor just fine and you will be able to you will be able to uh enjoy it just the same it will function with a lotus most of the time there are a few exceptions here uh some batches will be a little bit smaller but you know about seven out of ten times you're gonna see that the mini rook works with lotus uh quite well it's optimal, of course, with use of foil only or with the provost. The provost fits perfectly flush with the circumference of the rim, making it the perfect choice for most people, especially people that, um, that, that you know, like to smoke a lot of different types of tobacco. Some people, you know, like doing blonde leaves in the morning and dark leaves at night, for example. Uh, overall quality and build quality. Uh, guys, I mentioned quality control is huge and, you know, uh, alpaca bowls are some of the most consistent hand-spun bowls on the market. Now, when you have a handmade product, guys, you know, you're going to see some variations, you know, within the batch. Small little variations. I have three of them over here. And if you guys can tell, they're actually quite similar in the depth and in the width of the spire, the depth of the trench, the width of the rim of the bowl. They're all almost identical. 
and that's some that's that's very impressive now uh, with alpaca bowls you'll see them kind of change slightly batch to batch but the batch of thousands that they make at a time will be consistent throughout until a few months later the next batch comes in which will generally adhere to the same style the same shape the same parameters but maybe a tiny bit different Regardless, the performance quotient hasn't changed to date, and this is something you could rely and depend on. The clay material is very high, high quality, uh, you know, uh, hand spun ceramic. Uh, ceramic, in, in this case, being used as a term very loosely. It is a clay product. Uh, it's a ceramic hand spun clay product, and it's been the same since the inception of alpaca bowls, even going back to the OG bowl line of uh, line by uh, by the owners and it's been it's been incredible the special thing about the clay material is that it is uh, exceptional at at um, retaining heat so it's easy to get to a certain temperature but instead of it being uh, you know getting to the point where it overheats it stays stable meaning once it gets to a certain temperature it stays stable and static relatively and it allows you to heat manage a lot easier netting much higher quality sessions all around um, uh, these are some of the best features any bowl can have you know and these are some pros that you should definitely appreciate uh, quality and quality control you know guys this is this is an incredible product you know I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 uh, for that reason and finally uh, performance I extensively talked about uh, the performance quotient uh, again it's not the highest uh, possible but you get a very high uh, return on, on, on performance given the amount of tobacco you use. And for that, we're going to be giving it a 8 out of 10. All right, guys. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please, if you have any thoughts or if you want to say anything, don't be afraid to comment below. I want to hear what you think about the Alpaca Mini Rug Bowl. I mean, share your experience with me. You know, or if you have a better suggestion of a better bowl in a similar size and type category, Give me recommendations. Maybe I'll check that one out for another video in the future. But definitely don't forget to hit the subscribe button and follow me on Hook on the Minute, the Facebook group, and throw me a uh, comment and a like on the Hook on the Minute, uh, Instagram page at Hookah UNLTD. All right, guys, with that, I bid you adieu. Till next time, deuces!